I just want to start this by saying a couple of things. I haven't actually played Scarlet and Violet yet, and I don't know if I'm going to. This video is kind of about why that's the case, but really the games themselves are an entirely different topic, for which I've only heard very positive and very negative things. I also just want to make it clear that Pokemon is my favorite RPG series, and maybe my favorite video game series of all time. I've played every generation except for the ninth, like I've said, and this isn't just Guy ranting about how game development is easy or whatever. So our story starts with the golden age of Pokemon, back in Gen 5, the most controversial game Game Freak had ever put out up to that point. The Pokemon company made a lot of interesting choices that changed a lot about the formula of the game, and I'm realizing that it seems that whenever Pokemon games change the formula a lot, they become really great, honestly. But at the time, people hated Gen 5, oh my god. The Pokemon designs were so bad, and changing how TMs work, the linear map design, triple and rotation battles just being fucking stupid. Okay, I think they might have had a point on that one. The idea here is that give something controversial enough time and it'll be beloved by the end of the day. When I played those games though, I didn't know about the hate and I especially didn't care. I was just some little kid playing through one of the greatest RPGs of all time and I didn't even know it. It was just fun. As I look back on this story, I've realized maybe I've switched roles. Maybe now I'm the cynical loser stirring controversy while some innocent kids are having the times of their lives. Maybe I could be that innocent kid if I just tried. But there comes a point when you just need to stop, Game Freak. Alright, you know what, I'm getting ahead of myself. The jump to 3D happens, and I kind of see a bit of the exact opposite of the previous generation. Gen 6 and 7 come out, and I feel like everyone loves them. And then years pass, and people pull back the layers and notice all the holes. The obnoxious, unskippable dialogue, the significantly easier gameplay, sometimes copy and pasting previous games, the abundant unnecessary mythicals, and the 3DS severely limiting what 3D games could be, ironically enough. But despite all that, the games come out of the criticism mostly unscathed. And then Gen 8 happens. Holy shit, I think it just opened a vacuum in YouTube. Holy hell! Yeah, I don't know what happened, but Sword and Shield got brutalized like no other game in the series. These were supposed to be the glorious jump to home console that fans have dreamed of since Pokemon Stadium. Okay, I know I skipped Pokemon's actual first home console game, and I'll talk about it in a sec. So these games had a lot riding on them. And when they turned out to be incredibly unpolished, people got mad. Way too mad. And the saddest part about all this is that that anger turned into a hell of a lot of sales. Hey, can we get the Wikipedia for high selling Switch games? Thanks. Pokemon Sword and Shield outsold Mario Odyssey, Legends Arceus, Splatoon 2, Luigi's Mansion 3, Mario Maker 2, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I could keep going, but I think you see the point. Pokemon is Nintendo's cash cow. Whether you like it or not, that's what it is. That doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. I enjoy it, millions of other people do, and there's clearly developers who have a lot of love for this franchise. I mean, I still can't get over LeChonk, I just, I don't know what it is, it's just great. However, this brings us to Pokemon's two greatest mistakes it's ever made. It happened almost exactly a year ago, actually. Mistake number one, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Hey, you want to know why every Poketuber ever just dropped this game a month after it came out or just never mentioned it at all? Yeah, it's because everyone's trying to forget it exists. God, worst $60 I've ever spent. People wanted these remakes for so long and just ended up with worse versions of games they could already buy 15 years ago. But in my opinion, BDSP's greatest horror was its box art. Just yikes. I was so disappointed when they revealed that. Box art rule number zero, just a genuine no-brainer. Don't use fucking 3D models on the cover of your game. It looks like shit. Anyways, the game was bad, in case you couldn't tell. But, like I said, people kinda just forgot about it. This brings us to mistake number two, the far worse one. Making an actually good video game. Legends Arceus had so much speculation and so much hype around it just because it was actually something new. And its box art was really good, take fucking notes to Game Freak, I mean I know you were the ones that designed it, but come on. The game came out and it was fantastic. It's still one of my favorite games on the Switch, just watch Arlo's recent video on it honestly. Arceus is so fresh and just genuine fun. And while, yeah, it still had some kinks to work out, that was okay, because it was the first entry in a new take on the Pokemon formula, and the next game was going to utilize Arceus's engine with updated graphics, and no, that, that didn't happen? Okay. Mistake 2B. Making another goddamn Pokemon game. They just made another one. I mean, I don't really know what I was expecting. They included some features from Arceus, and they actually made it open world, so that's cool. So, why am I expecting something else? Well, because the state of Pokemon right now, for me anyways, is burnout. I mean, come on Eli, there's only been 9 generations in over 25 years, it can't be that bad. But no, they make sure to stockpile the rest of the calendar with Pokemon games, so I can't have too much of a break. And I feel obligated to get these spin-offs. Why? 
because I don't want to miss out on anything. Game Freak has me in their vice grip, and they don't want to let go. They can't let go. They found something too perfect, and they need it. Not having games out at all times is just a net loss in millions of dollars, no matter what way you slice it. They need to have these games out on time before the holiday season every year. The TCG will fall behind, and the writers of the show won't have a new season to work on, and the merchandise will be halted, and it's just one huge machine that relies on efficiency. Which is why, actually, this is a video essay on capitalism. You thought it was just going to be about fun pocket monsters, but I lured you into my trap, and okay, no. Not really. Well, I mean, kind of. People are mad that the games don't have the quality they used to. Well, yeah, if you're given the same amount of time to make a game for a handheld, and one for a modern console, especially if one used entirely sprite art, well, yeah, one's going to have more polish. But with Arceus, Game Freak proved they can make a truly great game, and I can't just sit by and ignore that while they keep using the same formula again. After buying Ultra Sun and Let's Go and Sword and Shield DLC and even BDSP, this effectively filler content, I'm just done. I'm up to my ears with this franchise and I just look at these Scarlet and Violet glitch compilations with a lack of surprise. It would give me so much joy if these developers would take some time off, cool it with the filler, and really just take a while to make a game that doesn't need to make a deadline. So the rest of us can stop white-knuckling our Joy-Cons out of fear, rage, and love. I know there's a redemption arc waiting to happen. And please, Game Freak, put Buff Pikachu in one of your games. I know he is out there. I know he is real. Let him roam free. Please.